Welcome to Life Today Live here on this Friday. You guys jump on in the conversation. We welcome all your questions and comments unless you're trying to sell me followers on <laughs> Facebook, Family. which people do. <laughs> <laughs> so a few months ago, I had on a, a filmmaker, um, documentary filmmaker named Rick Larson. We talked about the Bethlehem star. Was the star, what was it? You know, angels or planets or what was it? And he mentioned that he had another one coming out soon, another documentary investigating uh, sort of the scientific evidence of things that are in the Bible. And I was like, yeah, as soon as that's ready, you let me know, and we will talk about that, because this is fun. This is fun to me. It is. It and, is. Yeah, and, and Rick, Rick's there live, so he'll, he'll be with <laughs> us in a second. But just, just to introduce this one, because... This is fun. I, I just want to let you watch uh, the trailer for it. Uh, it is available, so you. It's it, now. I got the preview, Rick. I'm assuming it's available now for them to, to get. Is that right? Okay. It is. I, I forgot to ask him that before we started. It is available now. What is it? Well, watch this, and then we will talk with the man who made the film. When I first started looking, I thought there's not going to be any way you can tell anything about a quake that happened 2,000 years ago because the evidence is going to have been walked on. And then I heard about the phenomenon of the Dead Sea. Really, it's the history of Rome. It's, it's almost the history of Western government. As Christ is expiring on the cross, there is a great earthquake. It's big enough that it split the temple veil from top to bottom, and it broke rocks. John said it was worth shaking the earth from these people's feet at the end of Christ's work. He's telling us something big. I think he set it up so we could discover that these things happened 2,000 years later. As a physician with Rick, I'm often concerned about where we're going to go and what we're going to be doing. I know we're going to the Dead Sea. We're going to be climbing around in canyons. And basically, he can't feel his legs and his feet. When I first started studying the Dead Sea, I mean, these rivers, these wadis were nothing like this. They were much narrower. The evidence is disappearing. Even though it is rock, it's disappearing. Take a look here. That's a sinkhole. And the sea withdrew and down it goes. I think what we're looking for is probably about two and a half meters above this layer. Problem is I can't reach it. There's a seismite right here that's my big suspect. Yeah. No, 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 no. Is it possible that I could somehow see the evidence today, touch the evidence today? Is there a story in rock? Would it be possible to touch the rocks of history and hear? This is the Christ. Rick, uh, welcome back, first of all. It's good to have you Thank on. Thank you. And, and just here. walk us right into this. What were you looking for exactly on, on this journey to investigate whether, and I, I, I will say up front, whether the quake and the, you know, the sky darkening and all those things are metaphorical or literal changes nothing for me. But Absolutely. You, but you got into the, is it literal? And so I'm curious what you're looking for in this journey. Yeah, I keep, I mean, I delight in whatever the Lord asked me to do, but I'm just puzzled why I got, you know, tapped to do this, this work. We're uh, trying to puzzle through the Star of Bethlehem. Is that for real? And then the quake. Star of Bethlehem, uh, very exciting, and it's easy to understand why you would kind of want to search for that, just like the Wiseman people have been doing that for centuries. The quake is not like that. Uh, in fact, the quake is lost to Christendom. It's how God chose, you know, uh, to distinguish and, and, and make great the work that Christ did. And in particular, the words he said on the cross is finished, it's complete, it's paid. 
that's when the quake occurs. Um, still, that quake is just not, you don't, you don't hear from it, but it's not coming from the pulpit. But the reason I went into it is because it is a place where scripture intersects with the natural order. And uh, that gives me a chance as a skeptic, a lawyer, and a researcher to test. Not that I expect scripture to be wrong, but if it's true, then I ought to be able to find that truth where scripture intersects with what I can see and measure. So um, I assumed when I've read the quake, well, first I got pushed and pushed and pushed after I made star. People said, what's next? What are you doing next? What's next? And I kept saying to them, look, I don't have, there is no next. I don't do something that I bring it up. I do something because I'm told to do it. And I wasn't told to do it. And I, and I instead, when I talked to the Lord about this stuff, what I kept coming to understand is that you aren't finished with star. You know, what, what are you doing? You got, you've made Star Trek. Now you have a lot of work to take it to the world. And fortunately, now it's over 400,000 DVDs sold and it's streaming now and all that. But finally, he did show me the next thing, an intersection between uh, Scripture and the natural order is the quake at the cross. And, and so look at it. So I did. And I, I went in thinking there's no way anyone could be able to, be able to tell anything about a quake that happened. 2,000 years ago, unless it was a, a building that has fallen down or uh, something like that, it's, how would you even know? Uh, so I, I started looking at it and come to find out this is the most shocking thing to me. I've always thought that Dead Sea was a pretty cool artifact on the earth, the lowest place. It's actually a terminal lake. Uh, water flows through the Dead Sea, mostly through the Jordan River, but also through the, the watershed, including Jerusalem, around the Dead Sea. None of the water flows out, it all evaporates slowly and then leaves its salt and dissolved solids behind. That's why the Dead Sea is called the Dead Sea, because it's so salty, nothing lives there. No fish, no plant life. Uh, interesting. I thought, well, it's just interesting as a geological phenomenon. Um, but it turns out it's serving a very specific purpose, I think. I think it's a set, set piece of the Lord God so that we can discover what I'm going to tell you right now. The, the Dead Sea is, in fact, a great seismograph, really. We haven't had modern seismographs for over 100 years. So you can't just go look at some you know, accurate record of what happened in Jerusalem at the time of the cross. But the Dead Sea has been sitting there uh, 15 to 18 miles from Golgotha, recording carefully, fully, and completely everything that happened in Jerusalem, the seismic activity in Jerusalem. So let me tell you how that happens. Um, the water flows down in the watershed from Jerusalem and surrounds into the Dead Sea. In normal bodies of water, there's lots of uh, turbation waves. There, there are fish. There are things that happen in the water that stir the water, but not so in the Dead Sea because it's dead. It's still. So when the water hits full of its minerals, that stuff settles out like dust in a, in a still room. It's not disturbed by fish. You just get pages. Think of the Dead Sea as a, as a book. There's a book of pages, very, very thin. Most of the layers from a year are just a millimeter, two or three thick. Uh, and they're stacked very neatly, one per year. When they first settle, of course, they're not rock yet. They're just mud, as you would expect. So if you then shape the lake, when they're just you know, near the, the, when they're still soft, near the top there, it breaks those fine layers up and it forms what we see today as seismites in the wall of the exposed Dead Sea bottom, which is more of the story. So in other words, we've got a great, very accurate, perfect, not man-made record of what happened seismically in Jerusalem for thousands of years. Stunning. No place else on earth that happens. Gee, I wonder why it's there near Jerusalem. Anyway. Um, can, can I ask you a question real quick? Sure. I think I'm starting to get the picture. Okay, so you got the layers and layers and layers, and any yeah. disturbance in the water would result in a disturbance in the layer. Are they able? Do you know um, to go back to a known quake that was maybe 200 years ago? Am I on the right track? <laughs> you just give me. Oh, 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 who are you? Okay. Yeah. Because that, to me, is like that. That makes sense, and it proves your theory in in, in regards of being able to find it anyway. But you, you tell me. I'm jumping ahead. No, no, you're right. No, I love that. I mean, 
anytime anybody asks a question when you're teaching or even talking, you know, you're on, you know, they're, they're, they're there with you. Um, okay, so yes, you have to have an index because you have thousands and thousands of layers. But where do you start counting? Well, mm -hmm. uh, Flavius Josephus, as many of your watchers will know, uh, the Jewish historian, uh, rough contemporary of Christ, um, included in his writings um, a story, a brief mention of the Battle of Actium, which is a well-known battle involving Cleopatra and Octavian, uh, then later Augustus, and known players, Mark Anthony. Anyway, because it's a well-known battle, we, we know the date. It's spot on. We don't know the exact date of it. And during that battle, there was a sea battle, but there was a massive quake in Judea. How big? So big, Josephus says. Remember, there are no skyscrapers or anything in this time 2,000 years ago. Not probably very few double storied structures. Even so, Josephus says tens of thousands of people were killed. So we're talking about a serious quake, big quake. Uh, and it turns out that you can use that quake, which is easy to see in the Dead Sea records, to lock down an index from which you can count. And so if you do that, and you count up, it's very laborious, believe me, uh, you find, sure enough, in 33 AE, at the time Matthew records the quake of the cross, bam, there it is, in the strata of the Dead Sea. Um, but the mystery and the excitement about finding it is bigger than that to me. Um, remember, you know, seeing Dead Sea strata uh, is not an easy thing, or has not in the past been an easy thing to do. You had, maybe you could go to a submarine, maybe you could pull a cork, because it was down at the bottom of the sea. Uh, not available to you and to me. Um, and not only that, coring techniques, primary, ordinary coring techniques will destroy the softer top layer. If you try to pull a cork, you're going to lose a lot of information when you try to do that. From the earlier layers where it's not consolidated into firm rock. So we were kind of, the information was locked in the Dead Sea, but not really available. But God, for reasons known to him, uh, decided, let's pay hey, this time. Let's, let's, let him, let's let him have access to this information. And that's a big question that I can't answer, but I love asking, why is God disclosing today in the 20th century, 21st now, that these things were real? We know Jesus said, blessed are those who believe without seeing. And yet today, I'm going to go sideways here a little bit, and I'll come back to the Dead Sea. Just think with me for a minute how odd this is. There are many important things in Christianity, but only two primary main events. The Incarnation and the Cross. We celebrate Christmas. We celebrate Easter. We celebrate Easter. Throughout the Old Testament, and even Jesus in the news says, He is Lord of heaven and earth. God chose to mark the two most important things in Christianity— with a statement that he is Lord of heaven and earth. Huh. He, is Lord of, he announces Christ's conception and birth uh, in the sky. Yeah. He's Lord of heaven. Uh, and then on, at the cross, when Jesus finishes his work and says it's finished, complete, bam! <laughs> uh, and there, I bit the bam for a reason. We probably won't have time to discuss why, but I did that for a reason. Um, anyway, Okay, so, so God has proved in these two things, these events, that he is Lord of heaven and earth. Now let's go back to the Dead Sea again. Why is it so amazing that we can find these things out? Well, we have no access, and yet the Dead Sea in the last 10, more like 15 years, a little longer even that, than that, has been receding like crazy. Why? Because more of the Jordan River's been used. It's every, actually, it's hugely political. There's a lot of discussion about that. Why is it falling? But it has greatly. And in fact, if you go to the Dead Sea today, it's easy to see the thing is practically draining like a bathtub. There's no hole in the bottom. It drains only through evaporation, but the less water is being added. And what that's done is it's exposed the walls of what were once underwater walls with the Dead Sea. Slowly, they have come into view where, a, you know, a, a fellow like me can walk up to it and say, gee, I wonder what those lines mean, you know? And when you do that, uh, you can demonstrate what I do in the film. I show people that the quake did, in fact, occur there and then. Um, so I, I, don't wanna, I, I don't want to give away the whole thing, but just to confirm, you, you did see physical evidence that pinpoints a quake on, in, in that year, and you saw it in the rock. It's 
absolutely indisputable. it's right there in front of us it's right there yeah now it's in fact it's not just where i found it it's all in the surrounding areas of the dead sea it's more evident in some places than others because the sediment when it settles settles differently depending on you know where it is on in the lake and that sort of thing uh but yes it's widely you can see it there yes did you get any sense of how big the quake was uh, the sense I got of how big it was comes from other sources and deep sources that I wasn't prepared to discuss, but I will tell you that when we've almost abandoned the, the scale that people know the name of Richter, but it would have been something on the order of a five, which means that it was not the kind of quake that would have thrown a car off a bridge, but it certainly would not have been mistaken or missed, and it might well have put people to their knees. But, uh, but not on the order of the one that Josephus talks about where it would have killed a bunch of people. No, it was not on that order. And not only that, and in fact, I've even talked with one other person who was sort of interested down these same lines. And, and this, uh, this person, uh, also I guess a Christian, said he wasn't impressed at all with that because it was too small. And I was thinking, boy, guy, you're not really thinking very straight, are you? What, 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 what happened here? What happened here? is that God marked the quake right where the event occurred. He didn't shake Turkey and Israel and every place else. He shook it right there in Jerusalem where the cross was. So no, it wasn't a, you know, didn't, you get it. It was a localized quake. It, it was saying something invisible that has happened right here, and I'm not going to let you miss it. I, and I, I just like this kind of stuff. So forgive me if I get too nerdy on you. But no, me too. How yeah. how how big is the Dead Sea? How how wide is the Dead Sea? The Dead Sea, you can't throw a rock across it, but you can easily see the other side. It okay. is a, again, it is a terminal lake. It's not you know we call it a sea, but you can easily see uh, the other side of the lake. Um, so how wide? My, I can't give you an actual measurement, but it's not not very. Okay, then, then that may not matter. My question would be. Uh, if you were on the Jerusalem side of the lake, would would the formations be noticeably different from maybe the other side? But if it's not very wide, then it probably wouldn't be that different. No, you'd probably see much sim very similar across the other side of the lake, very similar. And now remember, there's a huge perimeter to the lake, whether it's wide or not, it's, it's long. Right. And so there, there's a huge perimeter and you're gonna be able to find these broken the seismites as well. The layers are called varves. V-A-R-V-E, and the broken layers are called seismites, which record the, uh, the presence of an earthquake before those varves set hard. So that's why it's a, an indicator of the date at, at, of the time of the quake. Um, and those, those varves are going to exist all the way around the perimeter of lake. They will be different all around because conditions, there are seismic vibrations that happen between the mountains on either side of the lake and things like that. Everything, okay. Uh, but, but it's there, uh, and there's some places that are better for viewing than others. What I was worried about is what can I get to? You know, before I made my film, The, the Christ Wake, uh, I went with a, with a young man, buddy of mine, he was my mule, and he carried everything. And we went, and the first thing I wanted to do is to see what can I find on site, and is it visual? Can I make a movie about it? And that was my first visit to Israel. It took, you know, less than a week, and we just try to figure out and can is it there yes okay but can i you know how do you make a movie about dirt and believe me that's not easy so um still got to be better than half of what hollywood produces i'm just saying but, um, yeah second time yeah, probably anyway uh, the content surely second time we went back you know uh you know more of the same i guess i'll just put it that way and then the third time we went back with the crew and stayed for a couple of weeks and it's a, the film's made with uh, four cameras, uh, sometimes more on every scene. It's not, you know, it's, it's a good documentary, well crafted. Um, it is about dirt, but part of the reason we do is work so hard to make it beautiful, which it is, is because it is a film about dirt. That's a secret I didn't tell anybody, okay? But, but that's how God chose to dignify the conclusion of, of Christ's work. And so we, you don't want to take it, don't want to make too much fun of talking about it. It's just dirt. See, the star was easy, you know, it's you know, lines in the sky, that's exciting. But, but making the dirt happen on, on the screen is a little bit more complex. But we, I think it works all right. Did, um, did you get into some any of the other things? Um, well, I, I don't expect there would be a lot of traces of 
people at the time in the Dead Sea, although they may, you know, an object may get washed in and you could find something. Um, did you find anything else or is it just dirt? Archaeological things? I did not. Yeah. I did not. Because all I'm really looking at um, is the people who haven't seen the film try to visualize a flat, I mean, quite literally flat cliff. It's just a wall that goes straight up. And, and, and of course, it undulates, but still, it's a wall. And uh, in that wall, you see just countless, mm -hmm. countless little fine layers, pages of history. That's what they are, annual. And then among those, you'll find some that are busted up that indicate seismic activity. Um, so I wasn't actually in this Dead Sea. I was outside in the dry land of the formerly underwater Dead Sea, yeah. uh, looking at the walls. Um, it was extreme there, believe me, at the bottom of the Dead Sea. I mean, it's like the temperatures are dramatic. We kept most of the really ugly, sweating, and nasty off the screen. But I'll tell you, well, well a guy died not two miles from where we were, from heat, yeah. while we were filming. Jeez. So it, it's pretty extreme. Yeah. Did you look at any of the other things surrounding uh, the crucifixion, the, the temple veil, the, the sky turning dark? I did. I tried. Let's put it that way. What I would love to have told you is that I can prove to you that the temple veil was torn by the quake. I believe that to be the case, but it's simply an educated guess. But the best I can tell you is that I couldn't find uh, the evidence. See, the truth. thing is, is I'm an evidence guy. I mean, I can tell a great story, but I'm an evidence guy. I need to be able to show you, and, and uh, you know, I guess the word is proof. I want to stand up in front of a university-style audience with professors out there and tell them, this is the fact. I don't want to have it. I don't want to have to be arguing from the stage, you know. So that's not what I do. So, uh, but the short of it on the on the veil is that it makes perfect sense. If the veil is hung from a, 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 a stone lintel, and the quake went, lintels are meant to bridge gaps, and that's what you hang curtains from. If it's split like that, that's the exact way it would split, like so, and that's why it came apart top to bottom. Top to bottom, yeah. Yeah. So, but I can't prove that, and so I don't teach it. Um, the other thing I was tried very hard to run down, but I simply don't have the money to do it. I want one of your viewers to do it. I don't know who you are. You do. Um, is to prove that the darkened sky was due to volcanism, because that's we know there's tectonic activity, and that would make sense. Not that that's necessarily how God did it, but I'm always interested to see how God did it. Many times He uses he controls the natural order and oftentimes uses it. Are, are, there, any when, are, there, are there any natural volcanoes near there at all? Um, the whole area is studded with volcanoes, most really? of them uh, extinct. Huh. Uh, the Golden Heights is three extinct volcanoes. Uh, it's it, I'm not saying that's where it came from. I'm just saying that the whole area is volcanoes. In fact, right now, if you go look at a map of volcanoes of currently active volcanoes around the earth, you're going to find 20 in that area of the world. So, um, as a matter of fact, the, the Dead Sea lies along uh, uh, one of the plates, you know, if you know much about tectonics, uh, plate tectonics, you know, it lays there, and that's, that, it's at the top of the, of the Great Rift Valley, which extends all the way down through Africa, begins in Turkey. Um, the Dead Sea is sitting in it, in the Great Rift, you know, the bottom of that rift, so of course there's going to be volcanism there, all right, along it and around it, and earthquakes. Interesting, interesting. So, um, yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it really is. And good questions, yeah. Judy, by the way, one of our viewers. Uh, yeah. So you mentioned that you, you, you want the physical evidence that you could put in front of an audience. I'm curious about some of the response from non-Christians. Uh, and because you, you're, you mentioned earlier, you know, you were a lawyer. Uh, um, you're not a trained archaeologist or anything no. like that. Um, no. How do those guys respond when they hear this and see it? Uh, so far, I have been stunned, both with Star and with Quake, that I don't catch the flack I was so frightened of. Uh, one thing that's important, I think, is to be diligent in the scientific method. And another thing that's important for major discoveries is sometimes to not know what you're doing, but be diligent in doing it correctly. Why do I say that? Because people who are trained in this fun, they already know or think they do everything. So they don't explore the things that a nutcase like me will explore. I go looking for things that people don't worry about. I don't know. They interest me and I pursue. 
but I have, but I do it with rigor. Let me talk about a little bit. I have to talk about something that's just been really itching me. I hope it's not too far off point. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, we're, we're still, we're still going through, you know, COVID-19. Um, and you hear this phrase, it's absolutely about to drive me up the wall. Follow the science. Oh, just, oh gosh. Let me tell you why that bothers me so very much. Uh, it's a fundamental misunderstanding of science. Fundamental misunderstanding. Uh, science is not a fixed thing that you follow. It's not like a shoebox on the table. Science is a method. Science is a methodology of finding fact and truth. It is not truth. In fact, it is a method for finding those things. The, the conclusions of science change, and then they change, and then they change, and then they change, and then they change some more. Always. Almost nothing is fixed in science. It's fixed as of a point of time, but as soon as we have better instruments, smarter people, more work put in on the to topic, the conclusions change. Science is a method. It's not a fixed thing. So that's why just not like anybody's even trying to really follow the scientific method uh, as they set social policy, which drives me crazy. That was off point. Sorry. Go on. You I know, say no, 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 here, here's, here's, here's why I find that actually very interesting. One, I hadn't thought about it in those terms. It's a method. It's not, a, it's not an end point. I've always said it's exactly. constantly changing. And for people that make science their god, for lack of a better term, in other words, they get all their truth from science, I'm like, well, mm -hmm. good luck, because your truth's going to be just changing <laughs> constantly if the science you're is done totally right. You're going to fall totally out of gear. You're going to fall totally out of gear in about 10 years, guy. Yeah, I'm with you there. Yeah, completely. And, and I had a conversation yesterday that I, I'll air soon um, about the COVID vaccine. Uh, yeah. And he was like, you know, we it, God gave us scientists. And, and, I, and I, agree, I agree with that. I think science and, and God are very compatible, 100% compatible. Yeah. I view science yeah. as the revelation of God. The more science we know, yeah. the more we see God. If you're, yeah. if you're following the evidence, which we should follow the evidence, right? Um, but that was my problem with the vaccine is like there's not enough evidence. And what you think mm. you know today, no doubt, is going to change six months a year from now. no question and so it's no just it's, it's but it's, it's that exact thing that you point out follow the science oh we should believe in the science well your beliefs are going to be shifting like sand yeah you know what yeah, let's do it a different way following the science would be like follow the rabbit <laughs> that's that would be much closer to a proper understanding of what that sentence means <laughs> okay all right so but let me bring it back to god okay yeah I, god is truth Science is a means of finding truth. Science and God are not incompatible. They are ultimately entirely compatible. There, that's why there are so many believers in the scientific disciplines. And I mean, I'm, I can only assert it. I can't, but I will tell you that I'm just confident that the more mature a science becomes, the more obvious it will become that it, 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 it is consistent and likely points to God. Totally agree. All right, man, this is just flown by. This is why I had you back. I need to show people the, uh, the website. This is Christquake.com. You can watch the trailer right there. You click on that uh, and you can find out information about it and see where you can get it on DVD or to stream. I'm assuming you can uh, get a streaming. You can't stream Quake yet, but I, you will, but not yet. Okay. I'm trying. So, I'm trying. Uh, uh, drag out your DVD player and plug it back yeah. in. And, or, or. Hey, no, let me tell something else before you finish talking about that. Yeah. I have to tell you, this was not on the, I didn't plan this. God did, apparently. So I finished the films. It took me 20 years to, from start to finish on those two films because I'm not a filmmaker. I'm doing other things. Anyway, I get two of the DVDs here on my desk and I see them together and I realize, oh my goodness. Those are the same deal. That's the same story. This is God's show and tell right here. You know, and so I put them together, and so they're now in a, a, a two DVD set. Like, unbelievably cool gift, anyway. But people throw them with their DVD, play, DVD players. Otherwise, great gift. <laughs> uh, it's called Heaven and Earth. Hold on, Hold on take yep, one second. And, and, and Judy, I couldn't follow your last question because I, I thought, why would there be dogs in the there? She is. That's a good question, right, Diggs? Here, all right. Here's Heaven and Earth. Get this. Get this. So you get the Star <laughs> of Bethlehem, and you'll get uh, Christ Both. quick. Yeah. Both. So I have to just, I'm going to take, it was really fast. Here's what it says on the back. This is God's show and tell. 
His word tells us again and again, he's Lord of heaven and earth. And now in the 21st century, he's chosen to show us. The gospels are not fiction. They are records. Where they touch the natural order, we can test them. When we do, we find that scientific fact of sky and earth are perfectly consistent with those records. Mm. These films tell that story. Good thing to give to somebody who thinks they're too scientific for Christ. <laughs> Love it. All right. Is there anything else going on that I need to know about before I let you go? Because this is this half hour just flies by for me. This is all so fascinating. Yeah, me too. Um, I probably left out 30 things that I'd love you to know. <laughs> um, I, I have a, a you know, difficult physical uh, circumstance, but I have done a film in me if God wants to get it out of me. Um, so, well, how, yeah, I, you know, actually, that, that was that's one thing I forgot to ask you because it was mentioned in the trailer that you could, couldn't feel your legs. I mean, how are you doing physically now? Uh, Well, the condition that I have, uh, reflex sympathetic dystrophy, uh, is has the highest suicide rate of any diagnosis. That's just numbers. It's a difficult condition to live with. And a lot of people choose to just check out because they've had enough. Um, it involves a great deal of pain for extended periods of time because there is no cure. And now, of course, you can't even get pain meds. So uh, I, I'm doing extremely well. For someone with RST, I've been through hell periods, but I've had, experienced substantial healing at a time. I'd love to tell you that story, but that takes a few minutes to do. Um, but I have experienced substantial healing, uh, but I'm still, I still, it's, I'm not pretending anything else. It's a little burden. I can't really travel anymore. It's uh, being on an airplane with my legs down for a period of time to get to the other side of the country or something. It's just like, hmm. That's a, that's a, that's a long reach. I mean, I'll do it. If a guy calls me to go do something, I'll do it, but it's hard. Yeah. And I was, and it was crazy that I decided to get on the plane with my team, which took a ton of people, of course, to, to make the film and flew over and then hiked the Dead Sea when I was in the, you know, headed downhill pretty fast with my condition and I'm hiking around down there. And I have to tell you, that was miraculous because I was able to do that film. I was able to hike and climb down there with this condition. And when I got back within, you know, two, three months, I would no more have dreamed of buying those airplane tickets. That was God. Interesting. Totally. He enabled the making of that film. I mean, I'm just flat out enabled it. All right. Well, one of my um, faithful viewers who has experienced a lot of chronic pain, her name is Judy. Yeah. She says, hang in there. And she, yep. she is praying for you as well. And I know she's a prayer warrior. So you've got some people out there. I love it. You got, love and it. You'll, well, you'll have to come is, back. I love her. Yeah. You, you, you can't check out because I need to have you back and we'll talk about something else cool here in, in, in a few months in the future. Well, I've got That's lots of stuff talking about. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, well, All this right. is, this is the website, Christ Quick. We've been talking to Rick Larson. He's the filmmaker, uh, the journeyed over there to find out is the, the, was the, earthquake when jesus was crucified was it literal and is there any evidence follow the evidence to form the yep. science and uh, yep. it just points back to god and, and, and go to heaven and earth movie.com to look at the more pretty website and maybe there's more trailers and stuff i'll add there say that again heaven and earth what movie heaven, heaven and earth heaven and earth movie.com okay heaven and earth movie.com all right uh well rick appreciate uh appreciate you pushing through to get these things done um, and then sharing them with us. Cause this is, this is fascinating. So thank you. My joy. Truly. My joy. <laughs> All right. The rest of you guys. Uh, oh, Judy says to look into hyperbaric therapy. You probably know that, but uh, yep. Okay. Thank you for interacting with Judy. Thanks for being a part. And uh, the others of you who uh, were part of the chat. Uh, if you're watching this in the replay, we invite you back at noon, Monday through Friday, right here on Life Today Live. Please do share this. If you haven't followed or subscribed, do it now and come back next week because I got more great guests. Um, and I want you to be a part of it. See you next Monday. Have a great weekend. This is your hour. Angry mom. And the hour starts, but enjoy it. Squeeze all the fun you can out of it. This is your hour. This is your hour. Because it's soon going to end. And truth will be on the soul of your day. Sunday is coming.